this video, I'm just going to talk about a few specific types of quadratic expressions that we like to factor, starting with the difference of perfect squares. So in this case, I'm talking about something that could be written as a squared minus b squared. So notice that this a squared minus b squared could really be written as a trinomial with a 0 AB term. Okay, so notice if I wanted to factor this, it would be pretty obvious to start with A and A, that would get me A squared. And what would multiply to B squared? Well, B and B would be something. So to get a negative B squared, we would want one of these B's to be positive and one of them to be negative. And if you were to multiply these two binomials, you'll see that the a, b terms will cancel out. So our difference of perfect squares will always factor into a plus b times a minus b. So as an example, we have x squared minus 100. So if I'm going to factor that, x squared is a perfect square. We can split that into x times x. 100 is a perfect square, we could split that into 10 times 10. But if we make one positive and one negative, we won't have any linear term. Same thing goes for 4x squared minus 25. 4 is a perfect square, as is x squared. So together, it is still a perfect square. So if we split these up into binomials, we'll factor into 2x and 2x and minus 5 and plus 5. So perfect squares are really nice to deal with. So sometimes this greatest common factor needs to actually be factored out before we recognize the quadratic. So in this example, we have coefficients that are all multiples of 3. So right away, I notice that my um, GCF, or my greatest common factor, should include a 3. But also notice that we have x cubed, x squared, and x. So at least an x can come out of each of those terms. So my GCF is going to be 3x. So let's factor out a 3x. That would leave us with 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. Now, take a look at the quadratic and see if that is factorable. Well, let's try 2x and x. Right? It's the only two terms that have integer coefficients that will multiply to 2x squared. And the only two integers that I know that will multiply to 1 would be 1 and 1. But since we would like this to result in a negative 3x, let's try negative 1 times negative 1. And if you just do a quick check here, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. Negative 1 times x is negative 1x, so that makes a total of negative 3x. And negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. So we were able to factor into actually three expressions here. So don't forget to check for the greatest common factor if it isn't 1. That brings us to our final set of examples that may not even look quadratic at all. In fact, this one looks quartic. However, notice that x to the fourth can be written as x squared squared. In other words, a perfect square. What if we were to replace the x squareds with something else? Let's say I replace the x squared with m. Now it should look quadratic, and I can factor this. We'd have m and m to start off our binomials. 7 times 1 would get me 7. Let's make that 7 negative and that 1 positive, and that would get us our negative 6m. But don't forget, we replaced x squared with m. Let's just put it back in now. So we would get x squared minus 7 times x squared 
plus 1. So now we have two quadratics. Take a look and see if either of those could be factored. x squared minus 7 is not the difference of perfect squares, so I can't factor that with integer coefficients. And x squared plus 1 isn't a difference, it's a sum. So this looks factored now. Over here in this example, we actually have two variables. So let's treat it the same way. What would multiply to 3x squared? Well, 3x and x. No choice there. What would multiply to 5y squared? 5y and y. So we do have one choice, and that is, where do we put the 5y? If I put the 5y here and the y here, this 5y would get multiplied with this x, and the 3x would get multiplied with the y. Let's see what happens if I actually do that. Oh, and notice we actually want these, these terms to become, become a negative 16. Let's make these negative, which is fine because negative 5y times negative y is still positive 5y squared. Let's try this out. We would get negative 3xy minus 5xy. That's only negative 8xy. So we can't use this combination. Let's try the other way. What if we did minus y and minus 5y? Now we'd get negative 15xy minus 1xy. That totals to negative 16xy, exactly what we're looking for. So it looks like the winning combination oops, is the 3x minus y and the x minus 5y. Again, I would try some practice problems on your own until you get into class tomorrow. Good luck.